I don't want to bury the lead. So I'm just going to start and say right out the bat, I love this thing. I absolutely love it. It's awesome. There are a few things that I had to do to make it 100% work for me, and I'll show you those here in a second. My voice has been in and out today, so if it starts to go, just bear with me. Hey everybody, I am just popping in really quickly. I'm updating this video before it goes up because I have been chatting with Eric from DIY Gateway and getting some more information about the melter that I had to include in this video. So I'm gonna give you a couple of updates and then I have some exciting news to share. So the wax melters that are on the site now, they're the newer models that were released in September, October of last year. Those have mileage of 3000 plus melting hours. That's incredible. And what's really awesome that Eric shared with me, unlike the Digiboil, what happens is when these, when the heating element does go on these melters, you don't have to buy a new melter. You can just replace the heating element. So you flip it over, you unscrew the five screws at the bottom, and you can just replace it. So if you buy this melter and in 3,000 plus hours, it, the heating element goes, um, you can expect to pay approximately $25 to $40 to replace the heating element. They have not had to do this before, so this is just us conversating about like for, for future candle maker me, what happens in 3000 hours or whatever. So the digi boils, you're unable to replace, the whole thing's gotta go. But with the DIY gateway melter, the heating element goes, you can simply replace it. Uh, that, is, that is so awesome because you don't have to buy a new melter, but also just just the environmentally friendliness of the whole thing. You don't have to throw out this whole can't like you don't have to throw out the whole thing. Like that is so freaking awesome. So the other question is, how do I know when the heating element is no longer working? Just like with your Presto pot, the light will no longer come on when you turn the dial. Also, if the light comes on and the wax is not heating the way it should be, that'll be a, a sure sign that your heating element has gone. All right, so now for the, the most exciting news. They have created a coupon code for 10% off your order at DIY Gateway. You can use Couture 10 at checkout to save 10%. I think that's incredible. Now that I've spent a significant amount of time with this and I am recommending it, I, I, I think you should go for it if you're in the market. It's a lower price point than the Digi, lower risk, than the digi. <laughs> I just want to remind you, if you don't know, if you're new here, I don't recommend anything that I haven't used and approve myself. I will not recommend things that I think are crappy. Um, certainly the Melta was, that was a journey and you can follow it along on my, on my channel. This is not a sponsored video. Sim I simply wanted to extend some type of discount to the folks that are spending their time with me to save a little money on a new Melta. All right, those are all the updates that I wanted to include in this video. Thank you again so much to Eric at DIY Gateway, and thank you for watching. Let's get back to the video. Now, I really wanted to make sure that I was moved in, making a ton of candles so I can give you my front to back full review. I posted a previous video of like unboxing this thing and like putting it together, trying to get wax into it. It was a bit of a mess, but <laughs> we did it, we're here. Um, I also, if you're interested in <clears throat> my thoughts about the Digi Boil, check out this video. I want to start at the very, very beginning from researching and finding this to receiving it and customer service. So I touched on it a little bit in the unboxing video. Basically it had come and the seal was sort of smeared like below where the spout is. And of course, after coming from the Digiboil disaster, I was like, oh my gosh, is this safe? Is it okay? And I reached out to them. Um, a gentleman by the name of Eric responded back to me fairly quickly. He said, yeah, it's totally fine. But if you're feeling nervous, he's like, just put some water in it and do a test run and let me know. So I did that and it was totally great. And I, I just appreciate that he responded back to my question, especially because I just bought this thing and I was like, I really just wanted to get into it. So I would say customer service, spot on, fantastic, A plus, thank you. <laughs> thank you for not ignoring me. <laughs> the unboxing, it's pretty straightforward. Um, everything came packaged really well together. Um, 
I'm gonna expose myself here. I had so much trouble putting the legs together because I was thinking that I had to attach them <clears throat> to me to the bottom <laughs> of the melter and that's not what happened. I'm not even kidding. I am just not that smart sometimes. And I sat here <clears throat> for like 45 minutes. <laughs> Cause I was like, I don't see how this is a attaches to the, to the warmer. Like, how is this gonna work? And so Pete had come up just then, and I was like, Am I crazy? Like, what is happening? Y'all, he just like he just put them together and he flipped it over. He's like, boom, it just goes like that. And I was like, If you're an overthinker, that could just be a little bit of a speed bump for you to get into it, but. Let me just tell you, you don't attach it to the melter. You just screw them together and then the melter sits inside of the base. There are a couple of things you wanna do, just like if you have a digiboil, um, to ensure that you know it's set up in a safe and proper way. Um, it does get very hot underneath. Okay, so I have these cement blocks here. So when this is on, under here, it gets so stinking hot. I wouldn't store anything under here. Just like with the Digi, I mean, it, it does get hot there. Like I have the cylinder blocks just cause they were like, I don't know, 50 cents or something. <laughs> um, I didn't want to have to make something or like spend a lot of money, but you do want to put it up one so that you can um, have height to pour and two, it gets really hot. So I wouldn't put this on a surface that could be ruined or damaged from that heat. And when I tell you, this thing puts out a lot of heat. Like if you put your hand underneath the warmer, it is hot. It's not like warm, it is a hot. Um, and this thing gets hot to the touch in like 15 seconds. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start a stopwatch and let's see how long it takes to heat up. I just wanna point out the body of this thing gets piping raging hot I wish they made a, a sleeve like this because this this gets hot but like you know I, I you don't burn yourself but I'm an idiot and I ran my finger see it's already freaking hot oh my god don't why did I do that again I burned the tip of my finger because <laughs> uh, this is where the heating element is do not touch this don't touch it I, it immediately blistered my finger so don't be like me. So it's all, it hasn't even been on a minute and it's already piping hot here. So I definitely keep this away from kids, pets, yourself. <laughs> it heats up really quick, low, quickly. I think I got a melt to temp in about 45 minutes, maybe 48 minutes. We're about the 40, almost 46 minute mark. I wanted to show you a couple of things to be careful of. Like I said, <laughs> This thing is so stinking hot. As you can see, I have, a, <laughs> I have a pot holder here because when I went to take the lid off, this is very hot. And <laughs> I almost burned my forearm there. So for sure, get you a, a pot holder to protect your arm. I actually probably need like a glove, but let's take a look inside. almost all the way melted. Let's go ahead and pop this in and see what the temperature is inside. You can see here. And it's giving me a reading of 194. So I would say it takes about 45 minutes to get to temp, which is pretty good time in my opinion. So I purchased the lid separately to put on top of the melta. Here's the struggle part. There is no digital thermometer, which I knew before I purchased it. But there are definitely some hacks and workarounds to make sure that you can get a proper digital reading. And so what I had Pete do is I had him draw, draw, drill a hole down through the center so that I can drop my thermometer in there. However, when it's full, you just need to make sure that you can hold the thermometer so it doesn't slip down and slip through and you know you don't want to get the cord in there and I'll show you how I rig that up so all right let me take you up top <laughs> so what I have here is was a dollar 98 for like a box of 50 of these is just a metal binder clip 
I wouldn't recommend getting a plastic one because this does get so hot it, it could risk melting. So just get you a metal binder clip. Pete drilled a hole, but he made sure that the whole thing can go in because as this gets lower, I'll need the thermometer to be able to dip in here. <clears throat> so to keep it from, so I just filled it. So I've used it, I've emptied it. I filled it back up. Let me see. I'll show you. So I've, I have this much wax. Gosh, soy is so weird, isn't it? <laughs> the thermometer only needs to go in to like here, but to make sure that as it, as the wax melts and this doesn't slip through, I just have this little guy right here. So then that way it can't, it can't fall in here because I have this. Which is like, you just have to figure out how you're going to clock the most accurate temperature possible. And so I am using a meat thermometer. I wouldn't recommend using a, like a, a gun thermometer. Those can be off by up to 10 degrees and that's just not a risk I can take with candles. And I don't think you should either. I think there is a time and a place for digital thermometers, but the inaccuracy is just, that five to 10 degree is, it's too wide. It's too varying for me. I need something super accurate, especially with soy wax because soy wax, you know, it's very particular. You have to know how to work with so soy wax. And that's what I have. I have the GB444 uh, wax. I absolutely love it. I have a, new, I have a different video um, about why I chose that wax and how it works for me, all that. I have that coming very soon. I've linked these before. I've shown these in videos. This is my candy thermometer that I use. Nice and wide, it fits into the big pictures really perfectly. I love these things. <laughs> I have a bunch so that I can keep batches going. So this pour, I, I got the extra wide mouth pour pitcher and I'm so glad that I did. Happy! Here's the thing, I had to get used to this because it, the wax comes out so fast. I highly recommend this, it's super awesome. Um, just to show you, this is this is probably a standard or what's considered just the regular uh, pouring spout. You can see this spout, it's a behemoth. It's so good. I love it. Here is the wax melter. I plugged it into my surge protector. All right, we have the temp coming down to 187, which is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and see how this pours. Very excited. Moment of truth with the large spout. Oh, wow, it's so fast, look at that. Wow. I'm into it. 